Welcome to this Tutor to You revision video that looks at the different strategies in place to protect tropical rainforests at the international level. This is part of Paper 1, Unit B, The Living World. We need to ensure that there is a balance between using valuable rainforest resources without causing long-term damage. Sustainable rainforest management is all about using the goods and services in a way which means they will still be there for future generations to use. Without sustainable management, the tropical rainforest will be lost along with their goods and services which are so vital. And of course, deforestation on a large scale has no place whatsoever in sustainable management strategies. Management of tropical rainforests occurs at three levels, international, national and local. However, some strategies can work across all three scales, such as education and conservation. This video is going to focus on sustainable rainforest management at the international level. Please watch the next two videos in the series to learn about national and local level strategies. There are many international agreements in place to protect rainforest resources and biodiversity. For example, we have the 2006 International Tropical Timber Agreement. This restricts trade in tropical rainforest hardwoods, making it more difficult to sell them and make money from them. This is important as tropical hardwoods are extremely valuable, so millions of trees have been illegally cut down because loggers know that people will pay high prices for the timber. Illegal felling often goes unnoticed by officials and therefore unpunished. This is because it tends to take place in the most remote parts of the rainforest. The 2006 agreement means that all hardwood timber has to be marked with a registration number which shows where it was felled so buyers can see that it was sustainably sourced. We also have the 1973 Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species. This treaty stops people trading in rare and endangered species of plants and animals, which is a huge global problem despite being illegal. However, 60 years after the agreement was put in place, the illegal trade in rare and endangered species is still worth millions of pounds annually. The final agreement is the Forest Stewardship Council, the FSC. The FSC promotes sustainable forestry and tries to encourage manufacturers and consumers to buy sustainable hardwoods such as mahogany, in the hope that this will reduce the demand for rare hardwoods that are at risk. Products that have been sustainably sourced carry the FSC label. Our next international level strategy is debt reduction or debt for nature swaps. Tropical rainforests are usually located in developing nations with large debts linked to loans and overseas aid. In order to combat this, some countries arrange debt for nature swaps such as a scheme in place between the USA and Brazil. The USA has agreed to allow Brazil to convert the 13.5 million it owes in debt repayments into a fund to protect large areas of the Amazon rainforest. Western governments have also agreed to reduce what Costa Rica owes them in debt repayments as long as they spend £27 million on conservation projects. These debt for nature swaps are part of a wider debt reduction initiative which sees high income countries writing off the debt of developing nations to enable them to invest in conservation projects within their own countries. These agreements are important for all parties involved. It means that the developing nations can protect valuable wildlife nature habitats and they can help the HIC governments meet their own targets for supporting conservation and tackling climate change. Our last international level strategy is education and conservation. Education and conservation is supported by non-governmental organisations or NGOs. These are charities that rely on dedicated volunteers and fundraising to finance important projects such as Greenpeace, the WWF and BirdLife International. Education and conservation NGOs are interested in all global biomes, not just tropical rainforests. So you may have come across them when studying hot deserts or cold environments. Their aim is to protect ecosystems that are seriously threatened. These charity groups promote their conservation aims in a number of ways. They write education programmes which include schemes of work, resource packs and classroom videos to be used in schools and colleges throughout the world. 
They train up conservation workers to ensure that they can protect vulnerable areas as effectively as possible. They also provide practical help to set up conservation programmes which help ensure their sustainability. And sometimes they buy threatened areas of land to turn into nature reserves to ensure long-term protection. NGOs working in conservation believe it's really essential that those involved in rainforest exploitation and management are fully aware of the negative consequences of their actions. However, conservation initiatives can also operate at national and local levels, which we will have a look at in the next videos. That concludes this Tutor to You revision video focusing on the different strategies in place to protect tropical rainforests at the international level. Thank you for watching.